Citizens of the Reject Nation, Greg is being solo today because I asked around to everyone who comes on this channel and my biggest fears have been confirmed. I am the only one who has not seen the much beloved Christopher Nolan classic, Memento. I started at Insomnia all the way to Oppenheimer. Have not seen this one though. It's been one of those movies that I've just been wanting to watch on my own time. I have no idea how well this video will do, but I figured if I was planning already watching it just to play some catch up, might as well point the camera at me while I'm experiencing this film and then ruin the experience for all of you. With that in mind, a few things I want to mention. First off, this reaction upcoming is going to be edited by the team over at Prepper and I'm not gonna have any time to review their edit. So if it's crap, blame them. And if it's great and you're in need of an editor, I highly recommend them. They're generally pretty freaking awesome people. Secondly, please go ahead, leave a like. That'd be extremely appreciated if you could go ahead and do that. And as always, full length reaction watch along where you sync up with your own copy of Memento available for our super sexy rejects. Those are our patrons. And thank you again to all you citizens who have converted yourselves to super sexy citizens. Over there, we have ourselves uh, many things that we cover exclusively with reaction highlights and watch alongs included. Well, with the limited amount I know, which is I believe Leave. This movie's told backwards. Obviously, Guy Pierce is in it, and it's a noir film. Those are my facts. Everything else, it's going to be a big process of discovery. Let's get into it. Polaroid of a crime scene. Oh, that's clever. I just picked up on it. <laughs> it's going backwards. <laughs> I was I was late to pick it up on that. Strange. It actually goes backwards the whole time. What? Oh, damn. You're in some motel room. You just wake up and you're in, in a motel room. There's the key. You've been there for a week, three months. Cool. This guy, he's here all right. Lenny! It's Leonard, like I told you before. Did you? I must have forgot. I love Joe Pantaleano. So he killed him. My car. He says you have a car. Oh, you're in a playful mood. It's not good for you to make fun of someone's handicap. Interesting. All right, roll up your window. How did the window get to be that way? So where to, Sherlock? I got a lead on a place. Yeah, it's just this building. Why do you want to go there? I don't remember. <laughs> this kind of feels like a Michael Mann movie. Looks like somebody's home. Uh, that thing's been here for years. What are you talking about? These tracks are only a few days old. Let's take a look inside. So how long is the time span of his ability to remember stuff? Teddy. Don't believe his lies. He is the one. Kill him. I finally found him. Find anything? I kind of like his detached noir performance. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Clue, you freak. Beg my wife's forgiveness before I blow your brains out. Wife's forgiveness? You don't know who you are. I'm Leonard Shelby. I'm from San Francisco. That's who you were. What you become? Shut your mouth. You want to know, Lenny? Oh, that's a good mystery. Let's go down, you and me together. Then you'll know who you really are. No! Tisk tisk. Sammy Jenkins had the same problem, but he, he really had no system. You really do need a system if if you're gonna make it work. Like it's like the early stages of his career development of an obsessed, pedantic, intelligent white man. <laughs> <laughs> and a loner too. All right, okay, so this is the scene before the, okay, yeah. I hope this does not hurt my head. I'm not sure. I think I may have asked you to hold my calls. You don't know? It's my memory. Amnesia. No, 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 no. I know who I am. I know all about myself. I just, since my injury, I can't make new memories. Damn. Well, what's the last thing you remember? My wife. Mm. You know this guy? Yeah, it's your friend, right? What makes you think he's my friend? I just saw you together, that's all. He's not my friend. If he calls or if he shows up here, you give me a call in my room, okay? There's a great rhythm to the dialogue here. You kind of learn to 
Trust your own handwriting where you put your notes. That also becomes really important. You need like a jacket that's got like six pockets in it, particular pockets for particular things. I wonder who he's narrating to. And you have to be wary of other people writing stuff for you that is not going to make sense or is going to lead you astray. I mean, I, I don't know. I guess people try and take advantage of somebody with this condition. He's shaving his leg. It's a nice to see a Christopher Nolan movie where the dialogue is so clear. Remember Sammy Jenkins. What are the facts? How often does he discover this? How is this crafted together? He left these at your table. Thanks. Lincoln Street? Oh, yeah, just go straight out on 6th Street. Go east all the way Hold through on, town. I'm just gonna write this down. Uh he shouldn't be behind a wheel. It seems so dangerous for him to be alone. Discount in. Natalie. My car. Teddy. John Edward something or another. John Edward Gamble. This guy told me his name was Teddy. I don't believe these lies. He killed my wife. That's not his real name. Yep. Mr. Gamble? John Gamble? Lenny, it's Teddy. Stay there. I'll be right over. Okay. Okay, so the clear-cut answer to the mystery would have to be at the very beginning of this story. The one in color, right? Because the one in black and white appears like it's moving in chronological order. God, I gotta get notes like this for an upload schedule. That's why he was shaving his legs. First name John. Drugs, license plate. I mean, all signs seem to point to him. It's him. I like the soft-spoken coldness to Guy Pierce's performance. It's like a hollowness within his soul, hollow soul. Oh. Does he not recall that's what exactly happened to his wife? What did we talk about? Oh, Sammy Jenkins. Sammy's story helps me understand my own situation. I have a more graceful solution to the memory problem. It's neat that it's like, in a, it's backwards when he looks down, but in a mirror. Reflective of it all. Today, 1 p.m., meet Natalie for info. She has also lost someone. She will help you out of pity. It's a solid assessment of an individual. Ah, the brilliant Carrie Ann Moss. Must be tough living your life according to a couple of scraps of paper. You mix your laundry list with your grocery list, and you'll end up eating your underwear for breakfast. I guess that's why you have those freaky tattoos. Oh, man, she embodies that great film noir performance. Here's a copy of his license, his registration, photo and all. Are you sure you want this? Have I told you what this man did? But even if you get revenge, you're not going to remember it. My wife deserves vengeance. Doesn't make any difference whether I know about it. Amen, brother. You can just feel the details. And you can feel these extreme moments. Even if you don't want to. You put these together and you get the feel of a person. It's interesting seeing these, like, Christopher Nolan motifs, especially the use of the flashbacks and the way he shoots them. He shoots them like a dream. I added an address in here. It's an abandoned place outside of town. Um, a guy I knew used to do bigger deals there. It's isolated. Do I owe you money? No, I wasn't helping you for money. Okay, wait. Is she framing Teddy? You know what we have in common? We are both survivors. Did she survive something from Teddy? He didn't even inquire why she's all beat up. I met Sammy through work. Insurance, I was an investigator. I'd investigate the claims to see which ones were phony. I had to see through people's bullshit. It's useful experience, because now it's my life. Okay, good exposition. Who were you on the phone with? Way to find out what someone knew was just let them talk and watch the eyes. If someone scratches their nose while they're talking, experts will tell you it means they're lying. Sammy was my first real challenge. Are we going to get to see Sammy? Yo, Lenny! I thought you split for good. Well, my name's Teddy. I guess I've told you about my condition. Only every time I see you. <laughs> The other day, you mentioned that maybe somebody was trying to set you up, get you to kill the wrong guy. Oh, well, I go on facts, not recommendations, but thank you. You can't trust a man's life to your little notes and pictures. Oh, my God. He didn't kill your wife. You really want to get this guy, don't you? Killed my wife. He took away my f***ing memory. He destroyed my ability to live. Fascinating. I really like... He can't remember 
this guy, but it still feels like they got a history together. I'm checked in here, but I think I've misplaced my key. How you doing, Leonard? Probably in the room, right? I really love Guy Pierce's performance. Just really like overly gentleman kind of guy. This is not my room? No. And why is this my handwriting? This was your room, but now you're in 304. I told my boss about the condition and stuff, and he said try and rent him another room. Is he lying? Always get a receipt. I'll write that down. Hey, what time is it? Quarter to one. Your room's. He didn't write down to always get a receipt. Everyone's a goddamn suspect. Doctors find some possible damage to the hippocampus, but Sammy can't remember anything for more than a couple of minutes. His wife calls the insurance company, and I get sent in. Looks like he's from a completely other era. This guy, who couldn't even follow the plot of Green Acres anymore, could do the most complicated things as long as he learned them before the accident. Right. But every time I see him, I catch this look. Sly it, look of recognition. Familiarity, yeah. But he says he can't remember me at all. Or is that in your own head? That you think that he remembers? This feels like a very interactive film. Oh, wait. Oh, where am I? Uh-oh. Somebody's bedroom. Oh, he's in Carrie on Moss's bedroom. You know, it's great that you... Well, that you're... Helping me. I'm helping you because you help me. How? So next time you see me, will you remember me? What's happening? I think you will. Eyes open. Yo, Lenny! I thought you split for good. He was right outside. What the hell is going on? Pick up any three objects. Oh! Some of the objects were electrified. That gave him a small shock. They kept repeating the test, always with the same objects electrified. Ah, uh, yeah. Natalie, right? Who the f is Dodd? Guess I don't have to worry about him anymore. What the f have you got me into? Oh, my God. You offered to help me when you saw what he did to my face. How do I know he did that to your face? Because I came straight to you after he did it. I showed you what he did, and I asked you to help me. Oh, and I just take your word. Yeah. She's lying about some shit. This has nothing to do with you. You help me out, and I'm grateful. Oh. He doesn't have the photo. I was literally wondering if he had the photo still. I've lost somebody, too. His name was Jimmy. He went to meet somebody. He never came back. Guy called Teddy. Teddy, okay. When you find this guy, John G, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna kill him. Maybe I can help you find him. So she did frame him. I don't even know how long she's been gone. It's like I've woken up in bed and she's not here because she's gone to the bathroom or something. Damn, this dude's gonna forever be in a state of grief. How horrible. How can I heal? Yeah, exactly. How am I supposed to heal if I can't feel time? Time, time heals all wounds, and he doesn't get that. It's not a luxury, but that's something this movie makes you do. Is be like, oh, I take that for granted, don't I? And time is still an element of a Nolan film. I like the way they draw these parallels of a classic film noir dynamic with the investigator, detective, the woman who needs help but they're going to be like doing inverses of the tropes. I feel like there's some big twist coming my way <laughs> and I'm trying to figure it out. She has also lost someone. She will help you out of pity. That's a oversimplification. She identifies and you guys have a bond. There's almost an anime-esque quality to Guy Pierce's performance. There, you get the impression of like an apathetic type of delivery, but you can just sense, you know, sense that it's all there. So much pain. We turned down his claim on the grounds that he wasn't covered for mental illness. His wife got stuck with the bills and I got a big promotion. That is horrible. But it works for me. I like the way Sammy couldn't. Habit and routine make my life possible. Conditioning. <sighs> Acting on instinct. Hi, <laughs> whoa, 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 what's happening? <laughs> Awake. Where am I? What did we just see? If, is that, was that the flash of how he lost his memory? Just a minute. I love how he has to always act like he's composed and knows what he's talking about. 
Is that? You don't know him? No. Is that John G? I don't think so. You don't think so? You don't know? You didn't write it down? Well, I might have fallen asleep before I did. I just fell asleep. <laughs> so we take him down to his car. We tell him to get the f out of town or we're going to kill him. You can't just walk him out of here tied up and bleeding. How the f did you get him up here? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> yes, I do. This is not my room. It must be his room. Great. Let's go. No, 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 no. <laughs> We clean him up, and we march him out of here with a gun in his back. A gun? Why would I have a gun? Must be his. Which one? What a great low-budget psychological thriller. This holds up so freaking well. So what do you do now? i find out what the f*** that was all about. This Teddy guy is too nonchalant about what just went down. Hmm, I don't feel drunk. I would love to know what the writing process of the script was. They must have written it in chronological order first, then had to do a complete rewrite, place it backwards. Like they must have had an interesting whiteboard. <laughs> this guy just like went to the bathroom. It wasn't like, who's showering? This guy hired to kill him? Dodd, put him on to Teddy. I'll just get rid of him for Natalie. Dodd. What nice penmanship he has. This is a message for Teddy. I'm at the Mount Crest Inn on 5th Street, room 6. I need you to come over as soon as you get this. Whew. Smart decision. Well, what Mrs. Jankis didn't understand was that you can't bully someone into remembering. The more pressure you're under, the harder it gets. Okay, so is the time of before a memory restart process happened, whatever it's called. Restart process happens for him again. Can be dependent on how stressful the situation is for him. Okay, so what am I doing? <laughs> this just happens in the middle of him running. Oh, I'm chasing this guy. <laughs> no, he's chasing me. <laughs> God, he really needs to change of clothes, especially if he's been running around in that same shirt all day. God, white guys, uh, Mount Crest Inn on 5th Street. guy has a very particular set of skills. It's weird, his background is an insurance agent, but he really moves like he's got some type of military or police enforcement training of some sort, you know? <gasps> the window is fine here. We're gonna finally see the origin of what happened to his car window. Do I know this guy? What the f Oh, damn. Okay, so what am I doing? Damn, that really sucks. <laughs> Ouch. Cut it out. It's just so interesting because he's got the same, almost the same exact style of filmmaking. He just does everything on on a much bigger, grand, a more grand scale now. You know, he's a more refined and knows how to work with like IMAX cameras and all these crazy big scale things. There's still so many similarities to his filmmaking, you know? Yeah, but you've read it like a thousand times. I enjoy it. I always thought the pleasure of a book was in wanting to know what happens next. Uh, don't be a prick. Just let me read. Probably burn truckloads of your stuff. Can't remember to forget you. Can't remember to forget you. What an ironic line. There's a poetry to a lot of this. Now, the police report mentioned the drugs found in the car outside the house. The car was stolen, but his prints were all over it. The stuff they found in the car just fit in with what they believed had happened, so they didn't chase any of it up. Is the twist going to be that he killed his own wife? I don't know how I feel about that, if that's the twist. I don't know what's happening. Honey, it's late. Everything Okay. Oh my god, this is like the horror movie version of 50 First Dates. Okay, in there. Because the police claim the guy was an addict needing money to score, which I think is bullshit, because he's not going to go breaking into places while he's still got a stash that big. Fair assessment. So he's a dealer. So fascinated by his wardrobe choice. 
to maintain wearing a suit specifically. We just go to bed, you wait for me to fall asleep, you go into the bathroom and you slam the door. Oh, fascinating. I can maintain some sense of having a memory. I mean, look at Sammy Jankus. His own wife couldn't deal with it. Tell me if you really believe that Sammy's faking his condition, what you honestly believe. Why is it falling on him? I believe that Sammy should be physically capable of making new memories. <laughs> Thank you. I thought she just needed some kind of answer. Didn't think it was important what the answer was. Oh, no. What path did you send her down, man? What path have you sent yourself down? That sounds like it was more reflective for you. You need some kind of answer. Who the f*** are you? Teddy, you're still here because of Natalie. Whose house do you think you just walked out of? Oh, nice shot, Leibowitz. <laughs> this is the bar where she works. Wait. Her boyfriend's a drug dealer. Did she? She takes orders for him, arranges meets. He writes messages on the back of these. So her boyfriend killed the... God damn it. She's going to use you to protect herself. Write this down. Do not trust her. You can't trust anyone. And what exactly is this guy's background? There. You happy now? I won't be happy until you leave town. Oh, that's what's crossed off. How did you get this suit, the car? I have money. From what? My wife's death. So in your grief, you wandered into a Jaguar dealership. You don't even know who you are. Yes, I do. Oh, my God, that's what he said in his death. You wander around playing detective. You don't even know how long ago it was. Wait, how long ago was it? Do not trust her. Don't believe his lies. Damn. No, she shouldn't have given me that responsibility. Legal responsibility, large finance... Answer the phone. Gnarly. That is some trippy, menacing music, man. It just feels like a spiral. This film. Dodd, Dodd beat the shit out of me. Why? Why? Because of you? Because I did what you told me to do. Yeah. Go to him, reason with just the town about Teddy. You're safe. It's okay. I just love how he never goes, I don't remember any of this. <laughs> just goes with the flow every time. I'll go see him. Yeah. I'll give him some bruises of his own and tell him to look for a guy called Teddy. This guy is so dangerous. Let's just think of something else, okay? I don't know, man. She seems like such a manipulator. Although I'm going to look like a real asshole if she actually did get messed up. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're a liar, lady. <laughs> I'm just so suspicious of everyone here. Wait, was there a bruise on his knuckle? Did he... Uh... A card this nice, you should lock. Who the f*** are you? Did he hit her? And she was making up a story? What a tense, taut film. This messes with your head, man. This messes with your head. Calls himself Dodd. Wants to know what happened to Jimmy and his money. He thinks I have it. He thinks I took it. Oh, well, did you? No. What is she doing? Jimmy went to meet some guy named Teddy. He took a lot of money with him and he never came back. Get rid of Dodd for me. Well, I'm not gonna kill someone for money. What then? <laughs> kill for your wife, wouldn't you? That's different. Not to me, I wasn't married to her. Hey, hey, don't talk about my wife. Oh man, this is bad. I can say whatever I want and you won't remember. I could call your wife a fucking whore and we can still be friends. You can't get scared, but hey, can you get angry? Yes. I can say whatever the I want, and you won't have a f***ing clue, you f***ing read. Oh, my God. What a bitch. You could write yourself a little note about how much Natalie hates your hearted guts and that I called your wife a f Hey, don't say another f***ing word. About your f***ing wife? Yep, there it is. You know what one of the causes of short-term memory loss is? Venereal disease. Maybe <sighs> your c*** of a f***ing wife sucked one oh. too many disease c***s and turned you into a f***ing read. What are you doing? Oh, and then she just made up the whole story. We'll still be best friends, even lovers. <laughs> yeah, he did punch her. Then she just waited outside or something. <laughs> what did she do? Stay focused. Find a pen. Gotta write it down. Keep it in mind. Keep it in mind. 
No, man. Your head's not a filing cabinet. That's what he was all he was doing was looking for a goddamn pen. Write down exactly what happened. Come on, come on, come on. I can find a pen. Jeez, come on. Come on, keep focused. Keep focused. Oh, she just waited this shit out. This is so stressful. <laughs> Write it down. Come on, concentrate. I can't lie. Find a pen. What happened? What does it look like? He beat the shit out of me. Oh, you cruel, evil woman. If you have all of that information, then why haven't the police found him for you? I don't think he exists. I was asleep. Uh-huh. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Okay, so he didn't kill his wife. There had to be a second man. But you can't trust your memory, right? I don't know what to believe. <laughs> he took the dead man's gun. He replaced it with the sap that he hit me with. He left my gun and he left the getaway car. He gave the police a complete package. They didn't need to look for anybody else. There is such a clever menace to this. Make a step at home. One thing. That's why I took the photo. film has such a great like menacing dread to it. I think this movie is better than a lot of his other films. But what? What's the last thing that you do remember? My wife. I remember my wife dying. That's not what he said. Let me um, get you another one. Did she poison him or something? I know you're a cop, but what do you want? Have I done something wrong? Because of my condition. You don't believe someone with this condition. Nobody believed Sammy. I didn't even f***ing believe Sammy. Jesus. He did thought Sammy was faking. I have no short-term memory. It's not amnesia. Oh, you're, the, you're the memory guy. My boyfriend told me about you. Jimmy Grants, do you know him? In fact, a cop came by earlier and was looking for you. Uh-huh. Are you Teddy? No, my name's Leonard. What's happened to Jimmy? I don't know that either. You don't remember where you've been or what you've just done. What did you just do? I found this in my pocket. You are a pocket. Did he steal that suit off someone? Yeah, this would have been just like a couple of years after The Matrix. That's neat. <coughs> oh, that's why she... <laughs> Here to contribute. No, thanks. Come on, proceeds are going to charity. Help me out. Gross. <laughs> Ew. On the house. Thanks. <laughs> oh, that's mean. Like Sammy. What if I'd done something like Sammy? I thought she was just trying to catch me off guard, so I didn't tell her what I really thought, but I never said that he was faking. Just that his condition was mental, not physical. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's time for my shot. So she found a way to test him. Oh, no. Gave the shot again. It's time for my shot. Hmm. Man, this little side story about Sammy is some of the most heartbreaking shit I've seen in a while. <laughs> Damn. She really thought she'd call his bluff. There it goes. That won't hurt. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, you got to be kidding me. He's been in a home ever since. He doesn't even know that his wife is dead. Now I know, you fake it. If you think you're supposed to recognize somebody, you just pretend to. You bluff it to get a pat on the head from the doctors. That's exactly what he does every day. What are you still doing here, Lenny? Well, I guess I just wanted to get something down before it slipped my mind. All right, then give me the keys. I'll move for you. We'll be all right for a minute. Wait out there. It's not safe for you to hang around here anymore. Why not? Because that cop's looking for you. He's been calling you for days now, telling you shit, slipping envelopes under your door, shit like that. How do you know this? He told me. He thinks it's funny. Has Teddy been calling him up? Jimmy's the drug dealer. The cop wants to know how his operations run. He's got some score in mind. Somehow you're involved. Uh -huh. I'm a snitch. He's a cop from out of town. The local boys put us together. Uh, okay. That seemed real. Wait, what was the one before this? 
Now I'm having a hard time remembering the placement of scenes. <laughs> was... Why did he write that down? I get the impression Teddy's the only one who's truthful with him, and for some reason he wrote that down. Because there's something he doesn't want to believe. Hey, Jimmy. He took Jimmy's car. And... Jimmy's clothes? Did he kill Jimmy? But he's not gonna bring her along. He'll come by himself, right? I always figured the drugs angle would be the best way to get him. You're in the lobby? What do you look like? I'll be right there. So did he already extract his revenge? Is Teddy the cop? I am not smarter than this movie. <laughs> Teddy is the cop. Lenny! Officer Gamble. Yeah. No, never mind. Now, is it Officer or Lieutenant Gamble? Just Teddy. This is the directions where he's going. My number's on the bottom if you need me. He You're should not be coming? Up. No, it wouldn't be appropriate. It wouldn't be appropriate. Make him beg. This is where the ending happened. That's why Teddy was upset to be returning back here. Teddy! You Jimmy Grant? Expecting the other Jimmys out here, memory man? Do you remember me? <laughs> yeah, I remember you. Why is he laughing at him? Well... <laughs> okay, so this guy did not do it. I knew I could trust that. Take it off. Your pants, too. I'm confused. Why? I don't want to get blood on them. What do you want from me? I want my f***ing life back! <laughs> oh, dude. Okay, so this guy definitely didn't kill his wife. Oh, oh, we're in color. We've converged the storylines. You said Sammy. How does he know about Sammy? Oh. What have I done? Is that what he... There's a, a guy in here. He's hurt bad. We gotta get him to a doctor. All right. Smart, smart. Now, I've got this memory thing. Do I know you? No, don't worry. I'm a cop. Still breathing? Oh, I don't know. So he actually is a cop. This guy's dead. <laughs> Ow! Buddy! That shit kills! So you remember me now, huh? And I'm the guy to help you find him. Get him! What's happening? He knew me. Of course he did. He f***ed your wife. He f***ed up your brain. Bullshit. He's not the guy. His name is James F. Grant. John G. Check your tattoos. Why is he framing him? Jimmy's your guy. I just figured we'd make a few dollars on the side. How did he know me? The discount end. He dealt out of there. The guy at the front desk let him know if anybody came snooping around. But why would he be in the house and kill his wife and stuff? He knew about Sammy. Why would I tell him about Sammy? You tell everybody about Sammy. So you lie to yourself to be happy. There's nothing wrong with that. Who cares if there's a few little details you'd rather not remember? What? What? Your wife surviving the assault. Her not believing your condition. The torment and, and pain and anguish tearing her up inside. The insulin. What? It was your wife who had diabetes. Ouch. Well, I guess I can only make you remember the things you want to be true. Like old Jimmy down there. He's not the right guy. He was to you. That's all that mattered. Why? You're never going to know. Yes, I will. No, you won't. I will. Somehow. I'll you know. won't remember. When it's done, I will know. It'll be different. Well, I thought so, too. In fact, I was sure of it, but you didn't. This isn't the first time. That's right. The real John G. He's already got his I revenge. I hope you find him over a year ago. He's already dead. Over a year ago? We found him. You killed him. But you didn't remember. So I helped you. Start looking again. And this is just the life he chooses to live? A couple of junkies too strung out to realize your wife didn't live alone. But when you killed them, I, I was so convinced that you'd remember. But it didn't stick. How tragic. 
I took that picture just when you did it. I wanted to see that face again. That's sadistic. How many John G's or James G's? I mean, shit, Lenny, I'm a John G. Yep. My name's John Edward Gamel. Cheer up. There's plenty of John G's for us to find. At least we know Teddy's not a good guy. <sighs> Come on, what are you doing? You know what time it is? It's beer o'clock. I'm buying. Oh, this is when he, he chooses to live. He don't believe his life. It all makes sense. I'm not a killer. I'm just someone who wanted to make things right. Can I just let myself forget what you've told me? He's not a lot of time. This is his life. How unsettling. And then he Can burnt I just that let shit. Myself forget what you've made me do. You think I just want another puzzle to solve? Another John G to look for? You're a John G. Oh, man. So you can be my John G. <laughs> hey, that's not your car. It is now. He's the guy you just killed owns it. Somebody will recognize it. Somebody will. I think I'd rather be mistaken for a dead guy than a killer. I might hang on to this for a while. Will you help me find the keys? Help me find my keys. <laughs> Some bleak ass shit. I have to believe that my actions still have meaning, even if I can't remember them. I have to believe that when my eyes are closed, the world's still there. Can't trust your own memory. <laughs> Went to the tattoo parlor. Now, where was I? <laughs> Damn, that holds up so well. That was amazing. That was really great. Oh my god. That that really fucked with my head. <laughs> that was great. All right, let's talk about it, man. Woo! I think I need uh I need to digest that a little bit. That is <laughs> real heady. There's a lot on its mind and overall just a, a masterclass in craftsmanship, man. It's so tense and taut, and the whole time I kept going, how did they construct this movie? I, this is one of those films that often you'll get this with Christopher Nolan, is you want to know what the what is the craftsmanship behind it. How did they develop the scenes here? What did they do in order to bring this to life? To me, it's one of Nolan's best films, honestly. I see why this movie was so talked about. And you can see like similarities of this main character amongst many of the other characters like while there's always this uh inner conflict with them and there's a constant nuance and whatnot not always as, as on display as it is here to me this was so character driven it was so character driven dealing with a lot of different questions and themes throughout it didn't get too bogged down in any of that and it also had a really unique style and a really unique structure that would suck you in even more and really complemented the disorienting nature of its storytelling without just feeling like a gimmick. I'll get it out of the way. I maybe felt like five minutes of the film, maybe five to ten minutes of it, was kind of dragging a little bit. I remember it having that thought. I cannot honestly tell you where that thought happened specifically in the movie though so that's really my one little criticism is at one point i thought it but then the movie immediately had some switch happen where i instantly got pulled back in uh yeah i thought it was absolutely brilliant man i think nolan killed it here and you know for uh, a guy who often makes films about uh <laughs> like sounds weird to say manipulation this movie deals so much, obviously, you know, with the, I, I believe the word memento has something, you know, I'm just going to look it up really fast because I know memento or like the physical items, uh, like the objects and whatnot, but where does the word come from? It means to remember. Oh my God. It's a double meaning with here. Actual mementos that he's using to dictate the narrative of his life. And it also means to remember and that you can't trust your memory. Whoa. So my mind is a little bit like a little 
little mind fucked right now. I'm so used to saying that with a Nolan film because of its like, wow, look at this grand level of masterclass filmmaking or IMAX stuff. And and this to me just blew me away because of story. It's dealing so much with a nuanced examination of how memory can be manipulated, of how our, our memories can be unreliable. I just love how the themes are so like so strong and, and, and it and it factors in so much to who they are as a character. Like everything was just complementing itself so well where sometimes I feel like something like this and sometimes with a Christopher Nolan film, honestly, is that you get so bogged down in the ideas and it's and dictating those ideas to the audience without really it letting it register to the characters. But uh, on the emotional scale and even on the physical scale, because I love how the mementos themselves are a form of manipulation as well. He's even manipulating the facts. He's manipulating the the things, the mementos. He's he's literally manipulating the the entire narrative because this guy can't grieve and he's got such a conflict about his own identity in this world and this is the thing that can give him a sense of self. This is the thing that could give him uh an actual purpose in life. It's really thought provoking and it, it, it gets you to kind of think about your own self perception. It makes you also like my, my mind's going to be zigzagging a lot here because with dealing with so much about memory, it does make you start to question your own memory. Cause they're talking about how it can factor into your own biases and whatnot. And the idea that he is trying to illustrate to Teddy in that one scene in the diner, about like he was relying on cold hard facts you can't even rely on that and this is supposed to be the physical representation of the memory because he's not going to rely he, he can't rely on his actual own memory with the style and the way this was done sometimes you find yourself try, like I, I like how the the scenes whenever they would go backwards they would still end like the the not the non-linear one is told in reverse they would still end on the scene that came prior because sometimes i would be having to jog my own memory of wait well, so it kind of messes with the audience in its own way, too, from a structural and editing standpoint of, wait a minute, what what was the prior scene? I need to try to remember what the prior scene is. It has the other multi-layer of having you trying to pick up on all these clues and try to remember everything that's being said because you could tell that this movie is leading to some big reveal and you want to kind of figure it out. And you're also trying to try to figure it out with Leonard along the way as well. You're also trying to remember stuff. <laughs> it's, just, it's this fascinating game about memory. And I'm more used to Nolan messing with time. And while this movie obviously deals so much with time and there's this element of time, the conversation as well about how time is the gift that we get in times of grief. And he is not allotted that. But at the same time, a, a lot seems to be compounded with because of the fragility of the situation that he's in and the unreliability of his own memory that a lot of it also seems to be compacted with because he he can't grieve that he so much of this is just in denial as well sometimes when teddy is talking to him and they're doing the flat and in, in the finale or the beginning when teddy is talking to him and giving him uh you know like the the actual truth bombs of the situation he gets these like little flashes. You know, one can argue that maybe it's just Teddy messing with his perce perception, his whole perspective of things. There's so much of the perspective of stuff they come in these like. I like the way that Nolan handles those flashbacks. It's kind of like the way he he can do it a lot of time, where it's just these little quick inserts. It's kind of the way like a lot of us remember is like these brief little moments in time. The disorienting nature of his own memories makes you then, as the viewer, suddenly go wait a minute, is this just his imagination? It, can he trust his memory that what Teddy is saying, that he's actually getting a flash of an actual memory? Or is it messing with his own memory in that moment? So you don't even really know what the entire truth is. I mean, it seems like that would be the truth, though. I feel like what we got at the end was the actual truth. Leonard already did find the guy and that Teddy is a corrupt cop who has been turning him into a vigilante of sorts for his own gain to make money. That would explain then, because they don't make it explicitly clear, that the Dobbs guy was going after Carrie Ann Moss's character, Natalie, because he used to work, he, he thought Jimmy ran off with the money, right? Did I piece that together? I think I pieced that together. And, and like the performances too, my God, we're getting so caught up in 
been so caught up in like trying to piece together my own thoughts here because this movie did a, a number on me. I love Guy Pierce's performance here. You know, the at at times where he would seem it's like he, he always had this that determination, but there was the way he would play pa- masking the confusion that he would have at the beginning of all those scenes and still having this vulnerability allows you to empathize for this guy who, you know, through a lot of the story you're going, you know, you, you can't trust any of these people, but then you start to question, should, should, can I even trust my main character right now? And even by the very end, as dark of an ending as it is, you still actually feel really sorry for the guy. But I thought he brought a wide array of emotions to his performance. Felt very human, and yet struck just the right kind of tone to make this. Bo- this is like an unforgettable performance to me because this is the kind of performance that needs to hit this certain kind of pitch in order for like because the plot's a little ridiculous. Like when you really break it down, it's like it's, it's a little ridiculous, right? They make it very believable, but it's it's a little far-fetched because this dude with this it's not i forget what the condition's called but this dude with the con- with the memory condition doing all this it's a little far-fetched i don't know maybe maybe people can actually pull it off but to me it, it's it's a little suspended disbelief right but the way he captures the grief the way he captures the obsession the way he captures the the anger this entire internal struggle there's a lot of great subtleties he's also really charming and funny and I think he really does bring a compelling insight into this character's fragmented reality, essentially. Consistent throughout. And he really carries this film so strong. Thought it was an unforgettable performance, and he really carried this movie, you know? Uh, Sometimes I feel like Nolan lead characters can be just there to serve. I mean, really, I'm just kind of thinking of, like, for the most part, there's always a depth provided. A depth provided. Hey, Leonardo DiCaprio also had a whole dead wife thing in uh, Inception. Booyah. And he's also a really smart detective-like character. There are these kind of like know the need tropes. And then Carrie Ann Moss, of course, man. Um, master manipulator. Her, her her incredible ability to oscillate between being vulnerable and being manipulative. This kind of character could have felt one-dimensional, but she really wasn't. She really brought a lot of depth to the role and I thought the ambiguity that she brought where you were just like, what is this woman's true intentions? So strong. It keeps the audience really, really engaged. And you're you, and you're also like, what exactly is her role in Leonard's life? What, what's going on here? It, it was a great performance, and I, I like the back and forth that her and Guy Pierce had, but she still had a wide spectrum of emotions as well, you know? Like her compassion and tenderness would seem believable, but then her anger and ruthlessness for her own revenge was uh, so repulsive. Man, she really nailed it down, but she had some great subtlety as well. Everyone had some great subtlety. And freaking Joey Pants, my man. Uh, you talk about ambiguity. Another guy who, you know, is trying to serve as like Leonard's guide, but you know he's doing that because he's really manipulating him and wants to, is using him. But he would fluctuate so much between, oh, no, you killed the wrong guy, Leonard. Uh, I think I think maybe Teddy's the good guy the whole time. And, and the, if the movie does such a good job of making you fluctuate between is he good, is he bad, I can't tell. But you really do get a sense that even though Joey Pants likes to use him, that Teddy likes to use him, that Teddy actually does kind of like the guy, that Teddy does feel sorry for him and he does actually like him despite the fact that he's a, 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 a shitty cop who – in the end, it seems like he actually deserved to die. But they also do have a a great chemistry that has a lot of tension to it as well. With this great mix of like, yeah, it was like a great mix where it would be like frustration, distrust, cynicism, with like moments that felt welcoming and and warm at the same time. Uh, yeah, it was the, the performances all around were very powerful as well. A lot of great moral ambiguity to the entire thing and uh, man i'm i'm a little bit blown away <laughs> by this and this is one of those things like when we talked about oppenheimer that was something where I had some a little bit of time to think about it like a few minutes and then going right into it and here you know there's i'm a little bit more mind blown by this because this is such an original idea that has a lot of great 
things that harken back to, you know, film noir tropes. Uh, but there's a lot on its mind, you know, that deals with vengeance, obsession, justice, the um, uh, truth versus reality, uh, the subjective side of, of reality, too. And just a entertaining ass movie at the same time underneath this entire package of like brilliant cinema. It's just a really entertaining film. I, I thought it was exciting and it, it, it had me suckered in from beginning to end. And there was this one part of me that was like, Oh, this is like really early Nolan days. I wonder if it's going to be kind of boring. I, I had a bit concerned that, um, that this movie was overhyped for me and and that's partly why I put it off because, you know, I came in on Insomnia, which I like Pacino and, and uh, Robin Williams. And then after that, it was, I think right after that, it was Batman Begins and then all the other films, you know, like Prestige and whatnot. So I, I thought, ah, I'm so used to like this really exciting Nolan. I, and this is like his, the low budget Nolan. This is going to be boring. This is going to be a boring film. And it wasn't. I thought, I genuinely thought it was one of his best because it, it deals so much with self perception, its own personal identity sense of self, um, but your own personal belief system, uh, karma, and and uh, trauma. I loved it. I, I loved it. I really loved that movie. I'm glad I watched it, man. That was a really exciting film with a great grip on... on uh, I wonder if like Nolan today would play, would make a movie like this because I know he's like the big cinema guy now, but man, I love this just zeroed in low budget. Like that's a lot with a little because it doesn't feel expensive, nor does it feel cheap. If that makes sense, uh, you know. And sometimes like they told the right story and it seemed like they they got all the right n necessary amounts of money. Some stuff is a little questionable, of course. Of how come cops never chasing down this guy where you know, he's driving around with a very identifiable car. There's gunshots going off. Maybe it has something to do with the crime boss stuff. Or the, I mean, like, Jimmy wasn't a crime boss, right? He just worked for someone. So maybe they wouldn't call the cops because of it. Then again, Teddy was on the case, so maybe he was manipulating stuff. There's a lot of things that where you can kind of fill in and go, maybe this is why this happened. Maybe this is why this didn't happen. Maybe this is why this didn't happen. Um, but overall, yeah, I uh, thought it was an amazing film. And... Again, sorry for just, like, trailing left and right. There was just so much processing of amazement from being from having such a marvelous, splendiferous experience with this movie that I was processing simultaneously when I trying to talk about it. I should have made notes. That would have really helped me out. Uh, but right now, yeah. Um, thank you for being here. And I will talk with you all soon.